Welcome back everyone to episode two of my Aston Villa save here on Football Manager 23. It started out on the beta, but it's rolled over into the main release. The January transfer window has just closed and that seems as good a time as any to jump into the save and to show you just how we're getting on. First of all, if this is the sort of content you enjoy, please do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, hit like on the video, leave a comment below. And of course, if you want to see us play Football Manager live, we are of course streaming three nights a week over on Twitch. The link is in the description below. Now, of course, episode one ended with us dropping two points due to a last minute equalizer at home to Southampton. Chan up over the top, Shea Adams. Oh, he's hit the bar. <laughs> oh, you've got to be kidding me. You, how? And I would love to say that things have improved dramatically since that point, but there has definitely been improvement mixed with a lot of sadness. Now, we lost our second match of the season to Everton due to an injury time winner from Solomon Rondon, and we didn't exactly turn up against Newcastle, so after three games, we were winless. However, three must be the magic number, as we then won our next three games on the bounce without even conceding a goal. We beat Fulham 1-0 with 10 men. We beat Leeds 2-0. And we also recorded a 2-0 win against Brighton. before losing another three, followed by one more. So technically four. However, what followed next was something of a slight renaissance. We dropped the 4-4-2 that we had been playing and we came up with a new system that we called the B6. It's essentially a Brazilian box. And with it, we beat Chelsea 4-1 at home in one of the most perfect displays of shit how soak up the pressure and hit on the break football I have ever seen. A run of eight games unbeaten, including wins against West Ham in the 92nd minute, a 3-0 victory over Nottingham Forest, and 2-0-0 draws against Bournemouth and Fulham, meant we were starting to get a feel for our new system. Or should I say, systems. Not only did we have the B6, we also had a narrow 4-3-3. Reason being, we don't really have much width in the squad. The International Murder Tournament came and went in November and in December a return to the Premier League saw a fixture list that quite frankly made me cry a little. Man City, Arsenal, Tottenham, Manchester United, Liverpool and Chelsea. Plus Tottenham and Liverpool in the Carabao Cup quarter-final and FA Cup fourth round respectively. Obviously we were expected to lose all those games so losing 3-0 to Man City wasn't a surprise. Throwing a two-goal lead away to Spurs to lose 3-2 wasn't ideal. But beating Man U 3-1 at Old Trafford? No one saw that coming. We managed to bring in a few new faces in January, thanks in part to selling the waste of time, space and money, Philip Coutinho, the underused marvellous Nakamba, and the, oh, he's not actually dead, Morgan Sampson. That gave us £45 million to spend, and due to a bit of wheeling and dealing, and in one case, overpaying, we brought in Yasser Espria, Victor Nelson, and Yanis Hadji. Espria and Hadji were brought in to address the lack of width we have in the side. Whilst £13.5 million for Espria might be seen as decent business, I'm fairly sure I wasn't watching properly when I agreed to a deal worth £21 million for Yanis Hadji. Oops. 
Due to injuries at the back and the fact we were conceding goals for fun, we spent £13 million on 24-year-old Danish centre-back Victor Nelson from Galatasaray, which, to be fair, is good business, given the fact that his buyout clause was £22 million, or one Yanis Hadji. At the time of recording, Villa sit 12th in the table, seven points behind Chelsea, who occupy seventh position and that final European spot, and more importantly, only six points above the drop zone, currently occupied by Wolves, Brentford and Nottingham Forest. And while the board don't seem to think I'm doing that bad a job, a poll in a local newspaper kind of gave a different impression and the fans aren't entirely convinced. Overall though, the fans only want a top half finish, so I suppose if I can win them round, maybe the board will be a little bit more sympathetic because they want European qualification. So on to the action. Tactically, we've switched to a 4-2-4 for today's game against Brentford. We figured as they're sat in the relegation zones, we need to play off the front foot and force the issue. Diego Carlos is being eased back into the side as he's been missing all season due to injury. John McGinn returns after two months out with a hamstring injury, so he's also got to settle for a place on the bench. Leon Bailey's in a bit of a mood due to restricted playing time. And Emilio Buendia is living up to his description as unpredictable midfielder. Bio and Watkins have 14 goals between them, and Emi Martinez will be hoping to pick up his 10th clean sheet of the season. And in case you're interested, the skin that we're using is the Kajuro skin. Link, of course, in the description below. So here we have it then, Tuesday Night Football, 12th placed Aston Villa versus 19th placed Brentford. I think we start like this. I think we start pretty aggressive, to be honest. Attacking mentality, we're going to step with a high line, a high defensive line as well. Luca Dean is going to pop up as a fullback on attack, I reckon, rather than as a fullback on support, because I'm hope, hoping for Springer to cut inside in this inverted winger system here. Uh, Gagliardini is going to win the ball for us in midfield. Douglas Louise is also going to be doing that battling role as well. And hopefully, that means the ball can get up top towards... Bio and Watkins. So we're in Claret Blue, they're in black and pink. We kick off. Mings on the ball. Nelson thinks about it. Gives out to Cash. He's instantly given to Bailey and he gives the ball away. He's throwing now for Sun. Five minutes in. Norgard runs through. Decent effort. That was a warning. Corner kick for Brentford. We weren't really expecting that to be honest. Jensen. Pops one over, headed away. Douglas Louise picks it up, charges forward. Clearance came to nothing though. Jensen's free kick. Aim towards the back post. It's been all Brentford in the first 12 minutes, man. Martinez launches that goal kick by. Oh, where's their goalkeeper? Watkins has dinked it over the top. I don't know what their goalkeeper was doing there. Playing sweeper keeper on attack almost. That's really, really high up. Spreads it out to Ben Mee though. Here's Weisman on the ball. Bailey tries to get back to help out defensively. Goes over the top, Dina. Goes back to Martinez. Fairly even. Corner kick coming in now. Jensen. Sends it over. Headed away. Douglas Luiz gets it again. Out to Bio. Has a look up. Anyone around for him? On the counter attack. Finds a Spria. A bit of space. Drills it straight at the uh, Brentford defence. Dina's cross is terrible as well. Just looking to play the ball down the left-hand side now, because we haven't really been uh, exploiting it that much. He's got a bit down the right. Bailey out to Dina on that left-hand side. Puts it back in. Bio goes for the header. Here's Bailey. Turns it back. Going ahead. Tennis. Jensen gets away. Weisman. Ivan Tony. Canos. Brentford get it clear. And they're on the counter-attack now as well. Very much on the counter-attack. Nicely defended. Bailey tidies up. What's he doing there? Going back that way. Out towards Dina though. Okay, here's Aspria. Nice. Well played. Go on, Aspria. Oh! Should have been a goal. Should have been a goal. Good stop from the keeper. Poor finish, really. Dina's corner in. Headed away. It's a little bit more like it from Villa, to be honest. Brentford have the ball again, though. Long ball over the top. Dini intercepts. Mings. Douglas Louise turns. Finds Dini again. Overhits it this time. Uh oh, counter attacks on. And Tony's got the ball now. Mings blocks it. Canos. It's Sun. Jensen. Mings gets behind it. Yeah, shot over the top though. Letting Brentford come at us unfortunately. Jensen's free kicks deflected up and over for another corner. Eight shots to seven, Villa lead. 
Only two on target from Villa, one on target from Brentford, I think. Jensen pops it up towards the back post. Mings misses it, Tony's got it. Blocked out, it's another corner, pressure stays on. I have to change our mentality a little bit, just the last couple of minutes before half-time. There goes the half-time whistle, nil-nil. As I say, eight shots each now. Two on target for Villa, one on target for Brentford. XG's of 0.6 and 0.67. It's not been a classic to watch. Let's so get in there. Tell everyone that we can still do this. Gagliardini's looking a little bit complacent. Is it time for McGinn? McGinn's not entirely sure how he feels about the situation. Bailey's a bit hesitant, so maybe Bailey's a possible for coming off, but 6.6 .6 at this point. 6.5 for Watkins. 6.5 for Gagliardini. Watkins and Gagliardini are maybe the ones that we might have to think about as the match progresses. We we'll change Gagliardini to uh, something a bit more suited for him. That would be a DLP. Right, we're still starting the second half in the attacking mentality. Still trying to get that ball down that left hand side. I'm sure that they'll have changed something in their dressing room. I'm not entirely sure who would draw benefits the most, actually. Good ball in from Dina Bio heads over there. Tease it up and oh, 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 that was close. That was very close. So we've changed Watkins up top for Musa Barrow. So hoping the Barrow's extra bit of pace might help us. Matty Cash looking a bit hesitant there. Maybe he allows the cross coming in. Blocked it. Cash tries to head it away. There's a spray now. Turns. Doesn't quite do well enough, does he? Here's Musa Barrow, thinks about it. Try to work out whether it's worth bringing Gagliardini off. <laughs> it's a goal, it's a goal. I'm busy trying to decide whether or not Jalen Ramsey's going to play as a centre midfielder on attack. And at that point, Aspria gets his first ever goal for Villa. Matty Cash with a throw in, Bio picks it up, turns, crosses, lovely header, Aspria 1 0 Villa. Just dropped back to positive, so balanced for her rather than attacking. I don't know that's a good idea on it though. So good effort, saved by Martinez though. Got the players regrouping as well, free kick from Dina, goes close. Eight minutes to hang on. Throw in now for Brentford. 90 minutes is up, we're into injury time. Four minutes expected by the referee. Get ahead tennis, we've conceded a corner. I think now is the time to bring everybody back. Let's see, let them have their corner. Godos, what's he going to do? Where is it going to go? We've got enough men in the box, I think. Hold it away. Musa Barrow blocks it. Baptiste. And block it again. Oh, what a save. What a save from Martinez. They're going attacking. Right, we're going to have to bring everyone back now, I think. This is, this is what we've got to do, right? Let's hopefully see if this is going to work. Godos. Brought every, we brought everyone back. Cleared away. Free kick to Villa. Time ticking away. This should be enough. This should be enough. Bear in mind, last time we did a live game, though, we conceded at this point against Southampton. Victor Nelson, don't do anything silly. Don't do anything silly. Put the ball out there in the corner. Excellent. Rare comes for it. Try and see if we can make a substitution to kill a bit more time. We can't. Brentford are on the ball now. Godos puts it in. Dina heads it away. Spree heads it away. Barrow should be enough. Ramsey, Aspria just got the ball out to Bailey. Perfect. Keep it in the corner. Doing it there. Connor Roberts. Nelson. It's all over. Three points. <laughs> yes. And there we have it then, we remain 12th, 29 points. We've not got that many games left, and to be fair, it's not that bad a run-in, to be honest. Could we maybe get into Europe? Next video is the end of season review. If you've enjoyed this one, please do us a favor, as I say, drop a subscription on the channel, leave a like on the video, comment as well, 
are we going to make Europe or are we going to finish in mid-table? Also, let me know who you think we should be looking at recruiting next season because, of course, we are going to have to do some summer recruitment and try and push on in season two. So that, of course, is the end of the video. Remember, we stream over on Twitch as well. We've, of course, got the links in the description below and for the skin. And, of course, we will see you very soon. So stay safe, take care, and we'll see you on the next video.